So for the last talk of this fourth panel of the day, this afternoon, Stefan Trübe is going to speak on Stuttgart, on the city that he lives and teaches in. You've met him before. He's the professor at, uh, and the head of our Institute for Principles of Modern Architecture, Design and Theory, the IGMA at University of Stuttgart. And before that, he's taught at many other universities, uh, such as Halbke Karlsruhe, University of Zurich, Harvard University. We saw his work uh, with Stefan Petermann and TU Munich. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Okay, yes, um, we've heard a lot about different cities already, Athens, Paris, Tel Aviv, London a little bit, Kiev now. Um, I would like... Uh, to add uh, to the series of cities, another city, um, a city in which I was born, uh, a city uh, which I hated for probably 30 years of my life. And um, now I'm uh, 52, find so interesting increasingly that we even managed to produce an Eich plus about it. Um, yeah, that's, um, that's a postcard I think I think the Tagblattturm um, um, by Oswald is already standing, so probably end of the 1920s, uh, kind of the, um, uh, the city uh, we are talking obviously here, uh, if we believe the slogan, um, about a city which uh, has one of the most beautiful settings in Germany. Um, kind of the, an idea of a kind of metropolis uh, uh, was part of this uh, cityscape very soon. Then after the Second World War, um, uh, squares like this uh, got constructed. This square is still called Austrian Square, Österreichischer Platz. It uh, looks like that here. And still um, we have uh, kind of a whole sequence of really f fascinating buildings like Asenwald, etc. This building is not, um, um, uh, we, we have um, many foreign guests, so maybe not everybody will know this uh, construction, which is the Kleiner Schlossplatz by uh, Kamera um, and Becher, which uh, uh, got completed in 1968. And one of my favorite images uh, of this building, I think it's so much better than what is there uh, now. <laughs> um, it's a, I mean, I, I, I have vague memories from my childhood uh, with this strange uh, combination of this tram, um, the Mövenpick uh, umbrellas, and then a, a little a relic of a, uh, of a window uh, of the building that was standing right before, which was a, something like an extension of the Staatsgalerie. Um, part of this cityscape that is not existing anymore was a kind of public artwork by um, uh, Hayek, a um, Stuttgart-based architect. So this is my little introduction uh, to my quick guide to Stuttgart. Um, then uh, in the early 1970s, so right after this building got completed, um, two Luxembourgian brothers came to Stuttgart. I'm talking about Rob Krier and Leon Krier. Leon Krier started studying architecture at my university um, downtown, um, um, and Rob Krier worked for Frei Otto. He even built his house, uh, and um, they increasingly, or from the beginning, they really hated Stuttgart, like, like I uh, hated Stuttgart in my 1920s and 30s. And the first even allergic reaction to Stuttgart by these two Luxembourgian brothers. Um, Rob Krier was an um, associate with um, a former uh, kind of not colleague, Will, uh, um, Wolfgang Knoll, a professor at uh, Stuttgart University. At this institute, he produced that um, book uh, on the left hand side called Stadtraum in Theorie and Praxis, uh, published in 1975. So I'm talking here about probably the first postmodern manifesto about a city, published three years before Collage City, the cover that we've uh, seen already. Um, there's even a Spanish translation uh, of this book available. It's completely forgotten. And it, um, basically, the, the idea of this book is to erase Stuttgart, um, except, <laughs> except the buildings uh, that got constructed before 1933, I would say, or 1935. 
So we see here the new castle, uh, uh, the, new, the new city castle, the, the Schlossplatz, the Altes Schloss, etc., the Königstraße, and we see here that the whole idea of um, this was to um, transform the city of Stuttgart into a sequence of closed and not so closed spaces. Um, it's a fascinating document um, of its time. Leon Krier, as I mentioned already, really hated it um, here and moved to London to work with James Sterling uh, from 1971, I think, onwards. Uh, he worked there, I think, for two, three, four years, I can't remember, but in 1977, um, the, the James Sterling story comes back to Stuttgart without Leon Krier, I have to admit, but still the, uh, yeah, uh, the um, Staatsgalerie competition um, was announced and the winner was Sterling Wilford and partners. The moment when uh, this competition was announced, a big debate, especially in Stuttgart, but uh, throughout the whole of Germany, started um, about the role of fascism in architecture. Um, there were articles uh, at the Stuttgarter Zeitung by Frei Otto and Bertolt Burkhardt arguing that this kind of monumental architecture is a very bad idea, that we need to stick to the idea of modernity. And um, basically what I'm, and, and uh, also my, the, the founding um, uh, director of my institute, Jürgen Jödicke, his name was mentioned already, was part of this debate in our archive at my institute. We have a, a big box with letters, uh, a letter exchange between Frei Otto and Jürgen Jödicke about this um, question of the Staatsgalerie. Basically, the front lines were that James Sterling, um, a D-Day member, a D-Day soldier, um, was attacked by uh, two Stuttgart-based architects and gen engineers. They are, they are great, both, of course, Frei Otto and Günther Benisch, but they were soldiers, <laughs> Wehrmacht soldiers. Uh, th so uh, these two former Wehrmacht soldiers attacked the D-Day uh, soldier for bringing basically fascism uh, to, to, uh, to Stuttgart in the shape of a Staatsgalerie. Um, anyway, so, and we, I'm talking about uh, the year around the years around nine when the first Venice Architecture Biennale happened, and then one year later, um, Jürgen Jürtike organized a big conference um, um, at uh, our university, Architecture of the Future, Future of the Architecture. Uh, where he invited Alfred Roth, the former collaborator, uh, collaborator of Le Corbusier, to think about the future of the Weisenhof. His idea was to come up with some kind of, kind of neo-modernist uh, proposals. Um, we see here uh, uh, yeah, some, some extensions for the Weisenhof. Also, Max Bill produced um, um, a variation of the HFG Ulm, basically, for the Weisenhof. Um, so this was one uh, group uh, of this conference. The other group was the young American postmodernist like Charles Moore. He produced uh, this proposal for the Weisenhof and he wanted to replace the five points of architecture with his five points of architecture. Uh, pitched roof, um, uh, no um, long uh, kind of uh, uh, landscape windows, but, but standing windows, etc. There was also um, a Polish uh, architect uh, who thought this would be a, a good extension for the Weisenhof. I would like to, uh, I could also say something about Gustav Peichel, the Austrian architect who said, I'm really missing um, arches here. So, <laughs> um, and he produced arches like buildings and he even um, proposed to uh, build some kind of postmodern uh, uh, yeah, garbage uh, or, or waste, waste um, uh, wasteland uh, in front of the Mies. Uh, and I would like to conclude with um, maybe the strongest artistic contributions uh, to this informal competition for the future of the Weisenhof. And I would like to present Hans Holland drawings that we found at my institute. We didn't know that they are still existing. Now they are framed, at least. Um, basically, Hans Holland produced this series of um, drawings. Michael Amelian, who spoke before, uh, integrated one of those drawings even in, in an art a piece of work of art of hers at the Staatsgalerie. And I would like to conclude here with um, three drawings. Um, the uh, upper drawing is a drawing by Hans Holland where he uh, proposed 
to build some, uh, some kind of strata novissima, the idea that was realized as part of the Venice Architecture Biennial, and he uh, proposed some kind of um, yeah, uh, clash between the horse rider and the cowboy uh, with, a, with a grand piano playing um, there. And the Strada Novissima was consisting of Hans Holland's famous, um, famous uh, fashion stores, mainly in Vienna. And the, the lower drawing here is the result of Hans Holland's question, what would the Weissenhof look like if the two most famous Stuttgart-based architects at that time, around 1980, would extend uh, the, the Weissenhof and Frei Otto would build? and Bodo Rasch would build. Um, uh, Bodo Rasch, who builds a lot in Mecca and Medina. Uh, so we would finally have the uh, um, infamous Arab village uh, um, realized by Stuttgart-based architects. And his comment um, about this fascism um, uh, debate uh, culminated in the lower drawing here, where we, it's a really a shocking document, I would say, where, we, where he even uh, proposed to integrate a kind of concentration camp um, uh, as an extension for the Weisenhof. He said that this is modern architecture. These drawings were exhibited at our university and James Daling always remained silent about this fascism debate. Uh, and, but when the Staatsgalerie was completed in 1984, um, he produced this book and he integrated one very mysterious photograph which is this here, and his only um, image caption was a visitor to the Staatsgalerie. Thank you very much. <laughs>